And we are live. I think we are live. Uh, Great. Let's wait. Uh, let's give it a few. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone who's tuning in. Let's hello, give hello. it a few. Tell us in the chat if you can hear us, if you can see us, if this is actually going live. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I never, I never know. This is the first time we're doing this. Uh, we have a bunch of setup and uh, a bunch of equipment and a bunch of uh, software. And the software is the problematic part. Yeah, I think so, uh, people can hear us, people can see us. Seems to be pam, working. Pam, pam. <laughs> Wrong Yay. sound, but, uh, but there we go. Uh, hey, Joel, how's it going? Hey, Riha. Hey, hey, Kate. Hey, Marco. Hey, in hello, hello. before lock. How's it going? Uh, let's kick this uh, puppy off. Uh, let's see how I can go to my screen. Uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm Dominic. I'm the CEO and founder of Memgraph. And uh, today we're gonna uh, show you what new features we have in store in the Memgraph 2.1. Uh, we're gonna do it live, which means it's gonna break uh, and it's not gonna work, <laughs> but hopefully we'll be able to fix it uh, right on the spot uh, because we have some of the smartest people here uh, in the room. Uh, we have our uh, CTO and my co-founder, Marco, uh, who is also known as the king of wild boars. Hello, Marco. <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah, if you don't know me from uh, live streams, yeah, I'm Marco. Uh... <laughs> Marco has the memduck, cduck uh, already. Uh, uh, she is also watching, or it's, huh. is it a he? Uh, it's a C, so I have, it's he, because cduck, but yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Logic, logic. Um, logic and logic. also we have uh, we have uh, Ivan uh, here. He's our resident developer avocado, uh, and he will be showing us the live demos. Uh, so he's the one to blame if something goes wrong. Yeah, no pressure. Ah, uh, uh. <laughs> how's it going, Ivan? Zero Sorry. Push. No. Uh, uh, let's no say it's going feelings. great. No. It, no, everything's awesome. gonna work out. Nothing's gonna break. Everything is bug free, <laughs> like always. Super, super cool. Uh, there we was no live stream uh... without. There was no live stream without issues. That's the whole point. It wouldn't be fun. Uh, and a live script, uh, a live stream with a script would also uh, not be fun. Uh, so this one is without the script entirely. Uh, so so yeah. Uh, hey Nordestino. Hey Janos. Uh, Hey Henry. Hey Mr. Denson. I really don't know how to pronounce all of that. Yure, I know Yure. Hi Yure, how's it going? Oh, hi Marco. I see you in the co in the comments in the chat as well. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's kick this off. I think we got about an hour. Uh, let's see if if we can uh, create something. So yeah, first of all, uh, big uh, applause to uh, our team. Uh, so we uh, finished Memgraph 2.1. Uh, the 2.0 release was in October, early October, uh, and we already have the 2.1, which is amazing. Uh, so you can go download it, memgraph.com slash download. Go on GitHub. Uh, you can check out the source code. It's licensed under the business source license, which converts to open source Apache 2.0 after four years. And we all know why we need to license it as BSL uh, in the uh, in the beginning so uh, let's kick this off uh, so we uh, did a release why because we are expanding and polishing uh, the data ingestion features into memgraph uh, and we want to make it uh, easy for users to get new data in and uh, what does that mean that means uh, improving the experience getting more than one data source into memgraph uh, we'll see this a little bit later, and also getting new, uh, supporting new streaming platforms. So now we can support uh, a bunch of interesting things. Uh, and uh, continuing from the 2.0 release, new data sources are uh, Red Panda, vectorized Red Panda, and also Apache Pulsar. 
uh, great technologies uh, and uh, even greater communities, I'd say, uh, of people using those uh, technologies. So go check them out, uh, definitely, if you are only a Kafka user so far. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, last but not least, uh, and this is the first thing we're going to address, is the protocol improvements and bug fixes, uh, which always happens. So Bolt 4.3 uh, is out, some minor updates in the handshake, uh, and uh, we also added support for the server-side notifications. Unfortunately, here's, uh, here's a screenshot because we don't have a demo of this. Uh, it's not propagated, I think, in the, in the other software, but uh, this is going to enable us to build some cool stuff uh, that you'll see in Memgraph Lab, NG Console, and a bunch of others. Uh, yeah. Any comments, Marco? Yeah, basically the, the, the biggest thing here is the query summary part. Uh, because these uh, query execution statistics were added uh, into into the query summary, so after the execution of of a query, uh, you can actually see what uh, actually happened under the hood in the database. So how many labels were added, or how many relationships were created. So that's kind of good to debug and uh, see what is going on. Uh, the others were the others were smaller changes like uh, adding compatibility with uh, Bolt protocol, but. Uh, yeah, and yeah, maybe to mention these notifications as well. So uh, not, uh, when you execute a query, if if there is something to notify, s server will actually send uh, a notification to the client, and then we, you can see exact. For example, if a query is too complex, or if something else is is also happened uh, in the database, uh, client will be, will get notified. So support for all of that uh, has been added. Yeah, uh, are the nice. notifications uh, already visible uh, through the clients? Um, I think not yet. Uh, uh, but yeah, we should we should test that a bit uh, with the with the, with all available clients. In our clients, it's uh, I think it's not yet supported. The lab uh, will have some will have support at some point. Okay, nice. Something to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah, and I see more people uh, joining the chat. Hi Angela. Hi. Ah, oh, hi Domagoy. Domagoy Pa. I know who you are. <laughs> uh, hi Yanko. How's it going? Hi Riha. Uh, and uh, this is the comment of the century, and why I don't know why uh, it went out of the full screen. But streaming is future. Change my mind, and I I will not change your mind because streaming is the future. And here's a banana for scale. Uh, so <laughs> we'll just we'll just we'll we'll just leave it at that. Uh, We'll wait for the non-streaming people uh, to join the stream. Um, see what I did there, uh, and yeah, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think we'll have. Uh, it's a pretty biased group, uh, but it's also the the one that is correct in this in this matter. Streaming is the future. Um, okay, moving on from my rambling. Uh, the Kafka improvements, I think the two greatest uh, things that people uh, actually asked us to uh, do is to give the ability to control the offset uh, of the consumed message. Uh, so you can actually uh, start from the correct uh, thing when you're res resetting, restarting, uh, so you don't have to consume the whole stream. Um, I think that's awesome. And we'll have some demo of that. Uh, and Ivan's going to explain us how this thing works. Uh, and uh, also, uh, what I'm excited about is the ability to configure Bootstrap server via query on the fly. Uh, previously, it was in the configuration, so you, you could have only one connection uh, to a, one cluster per instance of MemGraph, and now you, can, now you can have essentially as many as you like. Is there a theoretical or a practical limit to how many uh, connections you uh, can have? Uh, probably that's a map, uh, which means uh, there is no... Uh... Billions and billions limit. and billions. Theoretical limit, but practical limit, probably there is some. <laughs> practical limit is as much as your server can ingest. Yeah. The more yeah, cores, some point the more memory, gonna... the better. Yeah, at some point it's going to crash. Yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the fact. That's the, that's the trade But it's But software. it's for sure very high. It's for sure very high. Limit is like that's... unnoticeable. <laughs> unnoticeable. All right. All right. I have to give that a try. Uh, if there's anyone from the Memgraph team on the stream, put a note. Uh, let's do that in the next stream. Uh, let's try to crash Memgraph um, with as many data streams as we can. Uh, I think I think here we can uh, pass it on to Ivan. 
He's even yeah. gonna show us a, a demo for the Kafka offset. If you have one Absolutely. prepared. Absolutely. So awesome. it's a pretty simple app. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly show you the YML file uh, of what I'm gonna be starting. So everything is orchestrated with Docker, uh, Docker Compose, of course. And there are a few services. I'm gonna start uh, MemGraph. Maybe even, yeah. ma maybe even uh, just uh, zoom in a bit. Uh, that's like better Ooh. for smaller screens, uh, like one or two times. Yeah. Control plus on Windows. Okay, my is it yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. I that's think great. it's better. Sorry, yeah, move on. Okay, yeah, yeah. Looks so awesome. the services, I'm gonna start uh, Memgraph. Why does it say Memgraph Mage? Uh, because Mage is the graph library uh, that extends Memgraph with a lot of cool algorithms and utility procedures. You can also write your own and add them. They can be written in Python, Rust, C, C++, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, just to so move we on. Have okay, a, so, so we actually have a memgraph image, uh, and then we have the memgraph mage image, which is the memgraph image that includes mage, for those of you not familiar with, with Docker. And uh, we also have the memgraph platform, which is uh, memgraph batteries, uh, spares, the cable, charging cables, like everything included. Uh, everything from memgraph in one convenient package. So with redundancy would, uh, included as well. Redundant cables as well. <laughs> Redundant cables uh, and uh, cables you can sell as well. Um, yeah, go on. Sorry. Um, yeah, so actually you could uh, run this with a different memgraph image. Uh, we use memgraph mage because it kind of uh, has all the algorithms that we could need, but we didn't actually use them in this demo. So it will be fine to just use memgraph slash memgraph, which is the bare bones image that only contains memgraph as promised. Uh, so the other services are Zookeeper, which is of course needed for Kafka. Um, here is a default Kafka instance, nothing too special. And all of them are going to be started through the core service. So when I start core, it's going to start Kafka and Memgraph. And at the end, we have a simple producer that's going to feed us messages. Um, the data set is uh, art blocks NFTs, so simple uh, sales. They're just gonna be nodes. Uh, we don't have any relationships in this data set, so you don't get confused. Uh, we're gonna showcase the offset feature that was added to Memgraph 2.1. So let's start. First off, uh, I'm gonna start a core service which includes Memgraph Mage and Kafka. Hopefully, maybe, this will maybe go do a con fine. control plus here as well. Ooh, really? Better? It's better. Hopefully. Because the formatting okay. crashed. But it's going to be better next time. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah, it, it doesn't make oh, it, it doesn't okay. make much difference on the on the screen, on the desktop screen, but on mobile is uh, significant. So, yeah. Maybe you well, can do a bit no more one. as well. But yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's keep the... Mobile okay is the future. Change my now. mind. Mobile. I mean, uh, now, uh, like, people are probably not watching from the from mobiles and stuff, but in the f since video will stay on YouTube, uh, then, uh, y like, you watch stuff on, on mobile phone 100%, like. <laughs> okay, anyway, so sorry, yeah. <laughs> now we started the producer. Uh, it should be producing messages. At some point, we will also see them uh, displayed right here. Um, this means that we can actually... Our, ah, yeah, here they are, uh, they came in batches. So these are the sales that are, that are streamed through Kafka. And now we need to consume them in Memgraph. Uh, so this is Memgraph Lab, the visual interface we use to connect to Memgraph and run queries. Uh, here in the query tab, we are gonna create the connection uh, to Kafka. It's pretty simple. Uh, create Kafka stream. Uh, we are going to name it sales stream, uh, which topics are we consuming from sales. And now we need to specify the transformation module. Um, I'm going to show it to you in a few seconds. Uh, Buddha, maybe you can explain what the transformation module does, why I typed this in. Yeah, so uh, transformation module is actually taking uh, Kafka message or 
any other message uh, from Pulsar or Red Panda, and then transforms that message into the uh, into the into Cypher queries, uh, which are then executed uh, by Memgraph. And it's in this case, it's uh, all about uh, creating these nodes and edges. I'm not sure actually what this script is doing, but uh, in 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 yeah, general, so you can create a anything. I guess you don't yeah. know when you consume a, a message from the topic. A message yeah. can be anything. And uh, Memgraph, there's no way for Memgraph to know whether that message should be a node, should be a property update, should be a delete of a node, creation of a new relationship, yeah. updating of a new relation or of uh, an existing relationship. Or is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it it's right. Yeah. Right. So in this case, it's uh, all nodes are created uh, with uh, data from from Ka from Kafka message. Got it. Got it. That's why yeah. you need the transformation script in between to transform the incoming messages into something that memgraph understands yeah. and memgraph uh, talks cipher yeah yeah maybe on a on a higher level why that's the case because memgraph is schemaless so there is no schema involved uh, and it's easier to use it but when you uh, ingest data you have to specify somehow what to create and then that could be anything node edge property or update or uh, what whatever whatever uh, is in is encoded in the message and then you need to, to a way of saying that, expressing what actually Memgraph should should do. Awesome. So here's yeah, something um, familiar. As... Here's a create query that I see. Uh, yeah, it's and, pretty uh, simple. I see Python. We own... Yeah, you can uh, define your transformation modules in Python, which is the simplest form, probably. Uh, here we only take the values from the JSON object, uh, sale ID, payment token, price, and date time, and we create a very simple query with all of these values, and that's more or less it. This is what's going to be consumed by MemGraph, and these nodes are going to be created and stored in MemGraph for later, later analysis. So um, I typed in the query that's gonna connect us to the stream. Uh, it's gonna create a stream uh, here through the bootstrap servers uh, option. We specify the- Can you the put it in Kafka. a new line? Uh, I think the problem uh, is- uh, Of course. I, yeah. I don't know how to move your boxes, your face yeah. <laughs> from the stream. Uh, yeah, okay, my face better. is that's better. In the way. Uh, okay. Uh, why does it say Kafka uh, as the address? Uh, because it's uh, running on a Docker service uh, with this address. So this could be localhost uh, or any other IP address. But in my case, it's Kafka. So, ah, so it's a series I, of uh, Docker containers that are joined together with Docker Compose. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, they are running on the same network. So Memgraph is currently running on the same network as the Kafka cluster. Uh, that's how you connect then. OK, makes sense. Uh, so um, it was executed correctly, no error. Um, yeah, kind of anticlimactic, but that's it. The stream has been created. Now we need to start it, and we just need to. So, so the stream doesn't automatically start. So you actually have to no, run no, no, the no. start stream command. For example, you can create multiple streams uh, and then start them all at once. Start them all at once. That's a useful feature. Uh, so now I started it again. No error should be working and let's see Yep uh, As you can see nodes are being created uh, Maybe let's look at it through cipher return count and Okay, now it's 22 and, and now Till 22. It's 331. 31. You, you can actually go to the overview screen and overview screen updates uh, every uh, couple of seconds. So yeah. Yeah, but this ah, is simple. So if you if you just run, run, run. if you just stay on the overview screen, it, it gets updated. Yeah, yeah, it should be updated. So uh, yeah, click. Let's see. Uh, let's see. That. Come on. Give us give it a few seconds. But do you, do you yeah, need to click or or is it no 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 you automatically? No no, it's happening. You don't have to click. Just uh, move your uh, we are oh yeah, yeah, it's happening <laughs> without the click. Nice, nice. So cool. That's a billion dollar feature right there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit less, but yeah. <laughs> uh, low effort, medium reward. 
I will say. <laughs> but okay. Awesome. So um, let's just uh, print some of the nodes to be aware of what is in our database right now. Return N. Um, no. And let's limit it a bit. Okay, so these are the sales. Daytime, payment token, price, and sale ID. Uh, okay, so now I want to showcase the offset feature that has been added. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is uh, stop the stream. So and let's maybe say... It's interesting to note that uh, there's autocomplete in Memgraph Lab, which means that you're running the newest 1.3.5 Memgraph Lab, 1.3.5? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, version 1.3.5. I'm not sure if it's visible down in the left corner. It, uh, it added the new, I think it added the new features uh, for new keywords uh, to autocomplete. The autocomplete yep. in general worked before, but not for the streaming, uh, streaming data. Okay. So we can see that the stream we previously created, sales stream, uh, is no longer running. So here the number of nodes won't be uh, getting bigger. Uh, let's ditch everything from the database. Detach, delete, thank you lab, helpful suggestions. Okay, now it's empty. Uh, so what we're gonna do is call the new uh, offset procedure. It's called Kafka set stream offset. And the next time we start a stream, uh, because we have cleared the database, uh, I want to ingest all of the messages from the beginning because the Kafka broker has them saved. Uh, I'm execute this and after I start the stream again um, there should be a bunch of nodes present at the beginning um, so now I go start stream sales stream okay hopefully this is executed correctly uh, we can always check by using the show streams command um, says running is true and wow already 537 nodes so nice. uh, what happened Memgraph consumed all of the messages from the beginning I can stop the stream again uh, so, so if I have this right so right now the producer is still active so the producer script is, is still producing messages into Kafka yeah, yeah, yeah. It was producing uh, in the background all the time, even after the I time. stopped the stream in Memgraph. Yep. Um, so there's like, like 500, three... 600, it's going to be 700. Yeah. There's more and more messages coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. now uh, I'm going to put the offset to minus two in Memgraph. This means that uh, we're going to start consuming from the last produced message. So we are not going to do it from the beginning. Um, so we should the first go one query... by one again you produced from the start not produced you consumed from the start uh and that's why memgraph like flew right through all of the messages and there was like within a less than a second more than 500 of them yeah yeah now we're gonna do and, uh, the complete opposite so um, and if this works right correctly if the new thing works correctly uh there should be a very low number of messages and then a constant streaming coming i think if I got this right. Yep. Uh, it should start from the newest uh, produced message. Awesome. Okay. That makes so, sense. Uh, well, let's see if it works. It's going to work. Yeah, this. I'm not a betting man. Yeah, yeah, this is a bit. Uh, this is a bit Kafka specific, uh, but yeah, all these options are available and exposed. And OK, I need to start the stream. Yeah, and also the the thing is that uh, uh, these things are not. Uh, I mean, you don't have to do that through the application code. Like Memgraph deals with all this complexity and exposes API to uh, consume the right messages. That's much easier uh, 
that's out of the box. You don't have to do stuff on the application code, consume stuff, and then uh, take care of all these uh, like specific things related to the streams. Yeah, Fabulous. I absolutely agree. Uh, so now, as you can see, uh, we only started from the last produced message. So MemGraph is again ingesting them one by one. We didn't have 500 to start with. And I mean, it's a nifty feature. It makes life a bit easier for every developer who uses Kafka and MemGraph. I think um, the point was made. That's awesome more or less it from my side for now. Awesome sauce. Uh, let's go back in. So let's recap. What what have we done? Uh, so we've um, pushed a bunch of messages through the Kafka producer script that you built. Uh, and then using Memgraph Lab, we created a new stream in Memgraph that uh, ingested stuff from uh, Kafka. And we did it both with the uh, without the offset from the beginning, and then it just flew right through all of the messages that were ingested previously. And then we did it also uh, with an offset, uh, and the offset of of what? Minus two something? Which means you, you're, you're not consuming old messages, just new ones? Is that correct? Yeah, minus two means only new messages are getting consumed, and minus one means you're consuming them from the beginning. The last the first one that your kafka broker has stored any other values that you can put in here <laughs> uh you mean uh to uh, express the intention or what <laughs> i don't know can you do any other option uh yeah. start from the middle of the stream not from the beginning not from the end ah. uh not I, I, from my understanding, uh, Kafka is not optimized for these things like uh, going uh, back and forth. Uh, uh, these options are, let's say, optimized, and then everything else is kind of tricky. I think you can do a bunch of stuff, but uh, uh, but it's not optimized. Uh, let's say you want everything from the beginning, or let's say this in this case the last committed thing, which is, and th then you will get everything that uh, came in. Uh, since you did not consume or uh, how, to, how, how to put it in the best way but yeah uh, these yeah, are like yeah, okay. most common most common most reasonable options cool everything beans. else is kind of makes sense kafka is not built kafka is not, not built for like traversing back and forth between these messages let's say <laughs> it ma it makes sense if that's if that's the yeah. main use case it totally makes sense uh awesome okay uh let's let's see the chat uh, uh, oh, there's been some activity in the chat. Uh, uh, there, that's a question. I... That's a question. There's a question. Shout oh, the alarm. I have a wild question. Oh, oh, again, <laughs> wrong button. Uh, how can I know if some error happened while I stream my data? That's uh, that's a very good question because uh, when we just ran the command, we didn't know anything was happening until we ran um until we until we ran the queries to see if it if actually new data is coming in uh and what what if you're not producing data currently how do you check for for errors in the streams how do you know if it's an error or just no data mm, i mean the best thing you could do is check the logs the memgraph logs and see if uh, anything is out of the ordinary so each error uh, no matter critical warning, everything will be just saved in the log file and you can go through it to make sure yep. that everything works as expected. Yeah, if there is an error with uh, with processing uh, a message, then that's it. But uh, there is also there also could be an error with uh, a running queries against Memgraph. But in that case, we have that option, uh, stream transaction conflict retries, I think is the name yeah yeah uh which which will actually re retry a query if it fails and and you can configure like the number of retries and the and the interval okay so if there if there's an error in this in the stream in in a message wh while processing a single message that means that memgraph will try to do it again uh and see if it can make it work yep yep that's mm. how it works Okay. Cool. I think. Uh, awesome. And uh, just for scale, uh, I have my banana, but actually, I'm interested in 
Uh, where can I find the logs? If I want to find the logs? Ooh, that's a tricky question, given that I'm currently using uh, Memgraph in Docker, but you can show my screen. I can <laughs> guide you through the process. All right. Okay. Uh, so I yeah. started Memgraph again uh, in a Docker container. So what I'm going to do is with Docker PS, find out the container ID. Uh, okay. So Memgraph uh, Mage is running in a container with this ID. I'm going to take note of it. And now I'm going to enter um, the container with bash. So Docker exits IT the ID of the container and bash. Okay, got so it. now, now we are in the Docker container. Now it's the same and as if you would be in a Linux environment. So if you would uh, be running yep. Memgraph on Linux, that would be the same place where you would find the logs just without the entering the Docker container. Yep, it's essentially the same thing. So now you can just check them uh, at the same location. So var uh, log memgraph and yeah today is the first of december this is the right log and this is it so this is the log file right now we don't have anything special so no snapshot file uh, was found because i deleted everything from the volumes uh, memgraph had nothing to load uh, it loaded the transformation module you can see it here uh, it also acknowledged that it was loaded successfully Mm, and this right here accepted a bold connection uh, from this address. This was Memgraph Lab automatically because I had it up uh, in the background. It automatically connected to Memgraph because it found it uh, on my local host at the right port. So that's pretty cool. And here awesome. all these um, queries are Memgraph Lab uh, being this is us. diligent this is yeah. and uh, counting how many uh, nodes and edges are present in the database at the moment. So this is the overview ah, screen where um, you see all of yeah. them. That's, that's the thing that updates the, the counter. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Not, yeah, it's not magic as always. It's not magic. <laughs> ah. Yeah, well, <laughs> when I, I open the logs yeah, again. Maybe to mention, maybe to mention here, uh, there is also many log levels that can be configured with log level, minus minus log level flag. Uh, and then you get here, you see the bug queries. Uh, for this, you have to run Memgraph with uh, log Log level debug, mm. uh, yeah, and, and here it's actually uh, trace, it with trace. trace. So you get, yeah, which is in even trace, you get everything, better. the kitchen sink. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is probably not happen. what you want because it literally logs every single uh, query you run. Probably not in production. Yeah, for example, when you import a data set of at least 10,000 nodes, then you're gonna have a very bad time going through the log. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Okay. Thank you for that, Ivan. Uh, I'll go back to our screen um, and uh, let's continue the presentation. Uh, here we are with the support for the Pulsar uh, and the uh, Vectorized Red Panda. Mm, awesome streaming uh, platforms that we added uh, here. Uh, there's uh, probably a lot that can be told about uh, the platforms uh, and I think the only thing that we should tell people is to go check them out because uh, they have some great use cases, uh, both of them, uh, and uh, try to start Memgraph with uh, all three independently uh, at the same time. Uh, we have a question. Uh, which data formats are supported for data import using streams? Uh, I think I know this one, but uh, I'll... Uh... <laughs> okay, let's try you, Dominic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's JSON, definitely. JSON is the most common format that people would, uh, would use. Uh, but you can also use uh, Avro, I think, and also Protobuf. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, that's right, but it's not limited to these three because uh, because there is the transform script. Memgraph can process any 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 format. It, it's the matter of these. Uh, if it's the matter of uh, how these messages are serialized, so you can like build arbitrary serialization and then deserialize that data on the transform side. 
So mm -hmm. these three are probably yeah. the mo the co most common ones, but anything is possible on that end with the transform. You could script. even send like a plain text file or some crazy binary yeah. file. C CSV, that, that... CSV for, for example, CSV might be quite conv convenient uh, to parse and deal with. Row by row CSV. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. I forgot to brought up, oh, right. uh, bring the question up. Uh, Ooh, better luck like next time. But, yeah, next, 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 next time we'll we'll improve. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why we do it. Uh, we do it for for fun. Uh, let's okay, uh, and uh, I will uh, I will go back because I think we have another demo, which is the prime time of today. Uh, the e-commerce recommendation demo uh, with multiple data streams. Uh, it's very complex, so it's bound to have problems and uh, let's see if we can get it started yay live debugging session live debugging uh, okay mm -hmm. you're gonna switch to me to, i should switch to your screen there we okay, go okay thanks so uh again i'm just gonna show you the compose file so you're aware of what we are doing. Uh, again, a service, Memgraph Mage, uh, almost the same setup as before. Uh, this time though, we don't have uh, Kafka, we have Red Panda, a great Kafka alternative, uh, Pulsar as well, uh, and all of these services, Kafka, uh, oh my God, Pulsar, Red Panda, and Memgraph are gonna be uh, started through this core service. Tianan true. What is that? Uh, what? Uh, the image, core image, is called true. Yeah, I think this is the barest minimum you can have as a image. So this is the one you use when you just need to fire up other stuff at the same awesome. time. Okay, I got it. Um, Fun fact. <laughs> Fun fact, if anyone knows more about this, post it in the chat. Uh, Absolutely. We would, love, we would love, know, uh, uh, love to know more. Uh, we're not uh, Docker uh, and Docker Compose this is the experts. Yeah, this this is the price that comes with Docker. <laughs> there, <laughs> there are some abstractions you have to do yeah, yeah. but it's fine. I would say it works magically. So now... Uh, almost always good. <laughs> Until it doesn't work, then you're kind of screwed. Then it's uh, the worst so thing ever. First, nah, nah. let's fire up uh, our core services. What does the Actually, minus the D mean? Uh, detached mode, because uh, Pulsar and Red Panda will have a lot of logs. Uh, after they are started, they will blow the screen and I will just have to open up a new console. Uh, I run it detached, so I can just continue working here. Uh, detach or demon, so it's run in the background. Uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's, it's oh. definitely running in the background. Okay, fun fact. Uh, let's start the stream. Hopefully, Pulsar and Panda started correctly, and the stream service will be able to connect to both of them with their producers. And everything seems to be working correctly. Now uh, we're gonna open a new console tab because we kind of yeah. uh, have this one. You're right, Ivan. It's the detach minus the nice. detach. <laughs> That's why we pay big bucks. <laughs> uh, okay, now we have our first problem. Bind for um, this IP address host failed port is already allocated because I have memgraph running somewhere else. So Docker PS uh, and yep, the same port is used. And the same port is used. Yeah, but I like uh, using the same port. And this will That's kill fine. everything else. Okay, and now, like magic, it, it will works. fire up. Yeah, of course it works. Uh, okay. So now we started Memgraph. Uh, 
we are already connected to it from lab. Um, again, just like with the last demo, we are going to connect to the streams. Now, we actually have two separate streams, uh, a Pulsar one and a Red Panda one. Uh, let me show you what is being streamed at the moment. Um, this is the data model. This is the not found data model. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Open. Okay. Open image in your tab works. So um, in the database, we have two kinds of nodes, uh, users and products. Uh, both of them have IDs and uh, name properties, uh, pretty simple strings. So a user, for example, Amy, uh, called view a product. Uh, the products right now are phones, so iPhone, Samsung, Huawei, uh, different ones. So the user can view a product and there is a time step when that view occurred and the user can also rate the product. And uh, other from the timestamp, it also has a rating property. Um, so this is more or less it. And what's interesting to note is that the views are being streamed with uh, Pulsar and the ratings are being streamed through uh, Red Panda. This is also something that could happen in real life use cases, in production, you are connected to different data sources, different streaming platforms, and Memgraph can handle it, of course. So mm, Yeah, I, I can imagine, like you're running a big system and you have your CRM data and you have your clickstream data and you have uh, some of your proprietary data, maybe the weather data or something, and you w wish to join all of those streams together, um, and you would use kind of multiple connectors to memgraph and you could easily bring all of that data uh into memgraph exactly um the address again is for the docker container because we are running them on the same network that's kind of the simplest setup okay uh i messed up something Service URL. Mm, oh, sar. Sar. Uh, you have to create, uh, cr remove create in the beginning. Of okay, the I have double create. I have double don't know create. what happened. Nice. Uh, thanks for the catch, Buddha. And mm. the other stream I'm going to create is the it's one not to king Red of, Panda. It's not king of wild boar, it's, it's king of debugging. <laughs> Like, like. <laughs> Ooh, someone is getting a hang of the sound effects. There we go. Someone gave me access, uh, unrestricted access to the soundboard, uh, which may or may not be good. Uh, bad call. Okay, so uh, here we are using the create Kafka stream. Uh, query because uh, Red Panda is Kafka compatible, so you can use all of the same clients, uh, just switch your Kafka cluster to a Red Panda one and it will work out of the box. Boom. Uh, again, something is wrong and this time, aha, uh, because we are uh, connecting to a Kafka uh, stream, we don't use the service URL construct, we use uh, bootstrap servers. Bootstrap servers, there you go. And now Interesting. Now we're gonna start them. Start all. Marco, streams. I think I'm I'm slowly annoying even with the sound effect. <laughs> no. Slowly, steady, steady, but slowly. Slowly, slowly but, steady. but surely. Sorry. Yeah, slowly. But <laughs> <laughs> I was annoyed before you even used the first one. <laughs> uh, already now I know that I will them. not get a Christmas present. <laughs> Oh, let's see. There's still time until There's Christmas. Still time. I have to be uh, a good so, boy. we have two streams, and both of them are running, as you can see here. And from the overview tab, you can see that we are already ingesting data. So, um, everything seems to be working fine. Uh, let's check just to be sure with the simplest possible query. Um, let's get all of the relationships and nodes from the database. Uh, 
and limit ourselves. So you're matching all number. of the nodes, uh, nodes N, nodes M, and all of the relationships in between. Uh, but you're gonna take only a hundred of them. Yep. Okay. And this is our data set. Enough. So. As you can see, okay, let's turn on physics because it's more fun to play with such a graph. Now we can do this and it's gonna uh, jiggle. Um, so here we have a product, Apple iPhone 12, uh, the ID is zero. It was the first one ingested. And here we have a person. Uh, let's find a name I can pronounce. Hubert Farnsworth. Um, this is an edge uh, to the iPhone 12 mini. And he also viewed the Redmi Note 9 Pro. So that's more or less it about the data set. Now we can run actually some uh, more interesting queries. Uh, for example, let's return a list of the users that we currently have. Mm, we're going to map them to the variable u, uh, the label of the nodes user. Uh, let's return only the names. And we could order them by name alphabetically. And again, limit yourself. And this is more or less it. It's usually good to limit yourself. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it could uh, <laughs> take a lot of time <laughs> to fetch a really big uh, graph. Uh, everything could That's start lagging. Futuristic Don't wisdom right there, uh, mm -hmm. our viewers. Uh, so if, uh, if you're not going to use a limit, you're going to have a bad time. In life. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do the same thing with uh, product nodes. Uh, but these streams, this these stream, the streaming is not the streams. I mean, video streaming is not built for concurrency. When we all talk, it's horrible. But okay. Memgraph uh, deals with concurrency very well. <laughs> <laughs> that joke level um, one hundred. <laughs> it deserves a sound word. Come on. It's a, it's a... <laughs> so now we can see that there are quite a few phones also in the database that uh, users can uh, view or rate. Now let's try to find all of the phones that a specific user has viewed. Uh, what am I typing? User uh, has viewed. While you type, uh, I'm going to ask the viewers if you like this sort of uh, stupid humor. Uh, or just how we are, uh, you can join our Discord, uh, Memgraph, uh, well, uh, it's discord.gg slash Memgraph, uh, and there's a lot more of this uh, there. So, uh, good for thought. Okay, so nice. it works. Nice. So we returned all of the phones that the user app April Ludgate uh, viewed. Uh, we can also change this to, for example, rated. We're gonna find all of the phones that the same user rated instead of viewed. Uh, let's see what the ratings uh, were. So here we're gonna map it to the variable R and we're gonna also return r.rating to fetch the property. And okay, pretty basic. So the user rated all of the phones with the same rating. Uh, let's find someone more interesting. Basically, Leslie, no. Nope. Everything in your life okay. before. Oh, this, so guy this really one doesn't is a like the iPhone SE. <laughs> <laughs> this is my kind of person. <laughs> he should have tried. No, no, uh, no, no offense to the Apple fanboys and fangirls out there. Uh, now, let's do something a bit more complicated. For example... Sorry, Marco. I only got three this time. I need to upload a little bit more. It's going to be more for the next stream. Uh, three what? Uh, not three <laughs> audio effects. <laughs> no, no, uh -huh. no, nothing. Just continue. <laughs> Please continue. Uh, in this... <laughs> 
See, yeah. the audience yeah. likes our, our, our sound effects. This yeah. gave me cur enough courage to upload while, more next time. Who likes Ivan the sound effects? While Ivan is typing, all these demos are available on uh, GitHub.com. While Ivan is being judgmental, all of these demos yeah. are available on GitHub.com slash memgraph. Uh, yeah, so judgmental. and I hope I hope even you won't type all these things, <laughs> which are in the README of. Uh, of okay, yeah, 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 you're right. There in the README, I can just copy paste them uh, and go over <laughs> your query. Yeah, what were I, was I thinking? So, uh, what do we have here? Um, we got all the average ratings uh, for the phones that the user Hubert J. Farnsworth rated. No, uh, that he viewed. Viewed? Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, we wanted that's to... a little more interesting query. Uh, can you try... Uh, huh. We're gonna so for all go... the products he viewed, you also found the ones that he rated, and then you uh, returned the average rating. No, uh, I actually found all of the ratings. So uh, these are just the phones that Hubert J. Farnsworth viewed. And I got all of the ratings these phones got and averaged them out. Um, so you can see which one is the best. For You would recommend uh -huh. the iPhone yes. 12 mini because it has the that best rating. But uh, this is a pretty sense, simple use case. Uh, I can also add uh, another you filter you here. Anyone? Yeah. Uh, question uh is this inclusive i mean yes i think you need to view the product before you rate it so if if a product is rated is it also viewed always mm. actually in this data set i'm i don't think so uh this was uh this is just a simulated uh, data set of a, for example, e-commerce web shop and everything is random inside it. So yes, yes. So in this data set, I think there might be more products that he rated, but you only returned the three that he viewed and ratings, average ratings for them, I think. Marco. But good question. Does, uh, good how catch. How does that look like from your side? I'm actually not sure, yeah, as well, but yeah. Because you're matching the users who view the product. So yeah. there has to be a viewed relationship. Yeah. And then it also they also need to be rated. Rated, so yeah. A user, so a user might have viewed more products, but you filtered out the ones that uh, he did th that were not rated. But yeah. the ratings uh, are not necessarily for the same user. The ratings yep, yep, are from not. other users. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Interesting query. <laughs> and A meta. now I'll added a uh, filter um, just to take into consideration the ratings that happened after uh, June 1st, uh, 2020. So we are using the temporal times uh, types that are also available inside of memgraph your properties can be of the type local date time for example so when i run this uh, the ratings have changed because not all of the ratings have been taken into consideration nice yeah yeah that's more or less it and now we have a biggie uh, which i'm uh gonna copy paste Ooh. So again, if you want to try these queries out, they're available in the README file. You don't have to copy from the live stream. In fact, yeah, maybe I'm not sure. Not. I'm not sure. Um, in general, uh, like uh, Cipher can express uh, uh, complex stuff, right? Col right uh, like collaborative filtering. So you can run a very complex query in like very complex analysis in a single query. Uh, I'm not sure that this here is not the case. This is like a bit a bit simpler thingy I, if i'm reading correctly but yeah mm, maybe we can try to debug what the query were uh, what the query does oh let's watch that two of you trying to debug what the query does <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 sounds sounds like like fun. uh that's the next one i need to put uh so the user so, so you match a user by id so there's one user uh, and that user rated product, uh, and that, uh, so multiple but products yeah. um, that were rated by other users too. Uh, and then 
you do some projections, do some averages of the ratings, uh, as similarity and uh, the number of users. So you have the, the average and you have the number, uh, similar user count. And you order by similarity, you take the 10 of them, uh, which is order by similarity, that uh, ascending. Is, is that ascending or descending? Um, ascending which yeah is it the least similar what is the 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 higher the number the better the score or or the worse the score maybe that should be descending then mm, no it should be ascending because uh the lower the number uh the higher the similarity Ah, okay. Because the lower it's the number, uh, the higher the similarity. It's yeah. Rating it's other minus uh, the rating of the user we are uh, taking into consideration minus the rating of the other user. Ah, so minus. the lower the number, ah. that the similarity okay. is greater. Uh, uh, the uh, the view actually uh, the the code is a little small, so I, uh, on my screen I didn't see that's a minus. Uh, but are you missing are you missing the absolute value here? uh for the because that can be negative ah if, good uh, catch yeah that's a good catch so ups okay nice one cool and then we uh, okay then we order by similarity then we take the 10 most similar um and then we collect the uh other user id is the, is that other user what is other id other yeah other is a user other user id as similar user set and we also return the user the the, the main user user yeah, ID. just to clarify um and this one is being propagated throughout the query because i want to have it here in a column so that mm -hmm. you're always the aware yeah, the recommendations sense. are for this user for this user yeah makes sense but uh, yeah you could uh, also not have it if you don't want it but uh absolutely uh, it's not it's not mandatory uh and then uh you match a product uh fellow rate rated fellow user user uh and then where the user is is in the similar user set okay so you're finding new products that mm -hmm. are in the set of uh rated uh uh, rated the users who are most your similar, similar to users you. most yeah. similar to you uh, and then you also average that by rating uh, as score and then the the better the user um, your fellow user uh, which is in your similarity set has rated this product the 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 better the recommendation probably is for you so if I watch yes. something or if I rated, uh, the iPhone as uh, as like a five or whatever, um, and if you are similar to me, then uh, then iPhone is probably the thing that should be recommended to you. Okay, I think and we you. got this right. <laughs> Applause, Dominic. Good one. Awesome sauce. Seems your cipher skills are not as rusty as I thought. It's always good when people surprise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, and uh, uh, it goes up, it goes up, it goes up, and then I make a monumental mistake, and then all of the reputation <laughs> goes back down. Uh, that's so bad. That's, uh, that's the life. Um, awesome. That's more or less Continue. it from this uh, demo. You can check it out on GitHub, you can download it, try to run some other Cypher queries, you can make a PR, add new things, whatever you like. It's, of course, as everything else, open source. You're yeah, you can check it out on GitHub, it. but uh, after the stream, we'll also add it uh, into the description. So anyone who's watching the stream, hey, I appreciate you for watching the uh, video afterward. Uh, you can also find it in the video description. Uh, so you don't have to search through our GitHub, but uh, you can also go through our GitHub uh, and find more demos and more examples. I think we have a lot of repositories actually on GitHub. That's cool. Uh, oh, I see a question. What's Ooh, better? 
Kafka or Pulsar? Uh, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's a tough question. Uh, I will. As definitely... usually, as usually. What would you say? What would you say is the, is a defining uh, characteristic of of each something that uh, really kind of stands out uh, for them? Uh, I I, th I think kind of both of them are really good for some use cases. But uh, maybe kind of when when should a person consider one over the other? Uh, I will probably go. Um, as the biggest selling point of Kafka is the size of the community. It's a proven product. It has a lot of uh, production red instances already running for a few years. So you have a lot of documentation, educational resources. You kind of can't go wrong with it. But then again, there is a big upside to using Pulsar. For example, it's a bit easier for scaling problems uh, because the because the brokers in Pulsar are stateless. Um, it uses Bookkeeper in the background. Uh, you can just fire up how many you want, it, uh, and it will just will be able to deal with a higher true output with more traffic uh, definitely easier than kafka but then again kafka is going to lose zookeeper in a short while so it's an open question it's yeah an yeah and uh, if you also are using kafka and want to try something different that's compatible uh definitely would uh, point you towards vectorized red panda uh it's it's a, a very a uh, good piece of software and it has a, a smaller but uh, a growing community of members so uh, check it out if you haven't already yeah maybe uh, yeah well, one last thing uh, there is always pros and cons but yeah with uh, Kafka is more established uh, and uh, and all these things but uh, Pulsar is using a lot uh, Pulsar is doing a, a bunch of stuff on the cloud side so yeah probably in the cloud environment, uh, it's nice to consider Pulsar. Yeah, definitely. Cool. cool. How long have we been doing this? Uh, it's been an hour. Uh, we're losing uh, We're losing attention. Uh, let's quickly let's, finish this. Let's see what we have. Uh, I'm going to jump back into the presentation. Here's where we left, ref, left off. So definitely check out both of these, uh, in addition to Kafka, uh, good things to know and to have in your arsenal. Um, and uh, we'll finish with a bang. Uh, when I say bang, I mean an overview of how all of these things fit into Memgraph. Uh, and uh, you can see it on the left side. You can maybe see my mouse. Um, previously, we had only Kafka. Now we have Pulsar, Red Panda, Memgraph works with all of them. We'll continue adding more of these things. Uh, and of course, we didn't mention, but historical data, CSV, Postgres, MySQL, like if you need to mi migrate some uh, truth, source of truth data, uh, if you have uh, that you need in Memgraph in addition to the streaming data, that's always a possibility. And uh, the ingestion is a bit, big part of Memgraph. And uh, you can ingest all of those with our built-in streaming clients into the Memgraph. Uh, engine and uh, you can run cipher queries on the other side we use the bolt protocol so we are compatible with all of the other databases that use the bolt, bolt protocol uh, so far I know neo4j is, is one of them uh, and uh, there's a bunch of drivers which from both of the kind of open source spectrum of neo4j as well as uh, uh, Memgraph's native drivers that are built for performance. Uh, it's also something that you can use and uh, it enables you to easily build graph applications and always for explore exploration. There's MG console if you're hardcore and just want to use the console. Uh, but if you like uh, the visual experience, then you should definitely check out Memgraph Lab uh, on our website. Uh, and uh, uh, to actually get something useful out of your data, we actually support a bunch of algorithms uh, in our mage library, which uses um, our uh, query modules infrastructure, where you can write your own custom algorithms if you wanted to, that work directly on the storage API. And uh, uh, in a nutshell, I think that would be the Memgraph ecosystem. Marco, what have I forgot? 
<laughs> Nothing. You mentioned uh, all, all all the stuff, but yeah, more will come. <laughs> more will come. We'll, as you as as, uh, as you can see, a bunch of puzzles, and you can extend puzzles. <laughs> yeah, you can see some of these unfinished. Uh, some new ones will pop out, uh, I'm sure, and uh, uh, we'll see how this puzzle evolves over the live streams. Uh, looking at the comments. Do you have any incremental algorithms for analyzing the streaming data? Uh, is the comment uh, again same problem, but the comments there. Marco, how would you how would you uh, address this? Yes, that's the whole point of uh, the streaming stuff. So uh, we actually have a couple of uh, them already uh, as a part of Mage. Uh, so uh, we are building on we are building. Uh, page rank, dynamic page rank, uh, community detection, and uh, node to uh, These are already, uh, I mean, uh, part of the major repository. Uh, but we'll soon have another release uh, of these things, and we're gonna make another read, uh, another live stream, uh, going more in depth uh, with these incremental al algorithms. Uh, but yeah, the whole point is to uh, run. Uh, incremental algorithms on top of streaming data because then you have all the benefits uh, and you cannot do that like on static data or on static data on only thing is po that's possible are these uh, uh, long algorithms for example page rank and it takes a lot of time to analyze stuff and if something changes you have to recompute everything uh, so we are kind of trying to provide something that can work on the fly and not rerun the, the whole analysis every single time something changes but yeah, stay tuned for so, that. So, stay tuned, I'd say. Uh, stay tuned for 15th of uh, December, 16th. Uh, we'll see what the date is going to be. Um, if you're watching this afterwards, make sure to find the live stream somewhere uh, down in the channel uh, because we'll be doing another one of these. Uh, and uh, we'll have some awesome demos that will show the power of incremental algorithms, I guess. But uh, we'll we'll get to that when we build the content for that. We still have a vague, yeah. only a vague idea of what we want to show. It's in the works. Yeah, to be to be to be precise, there is a difference between dynamic, incremental, and all these things and streaming. Uh, let's yeah, not go into that right now. Yeah, yeah, but let's not go into that. Uh, it's uh, like uh, we uh, will try to we cover need a separate all show of them. for that. Yeah, the show is going to be called <laughs> Math with Marco. Uh, and uh, then Marco can explain the theory of why things are like they are. Uh, Dominic, do you have any slides left? Let's see. Uh, what's the next slide? Uh, how could I forget? Uh, we're running the annual Memgraph app challenge. Um, join us and win a cash prize. I think it's like $3,500 Pool, uh, price pool this year uh, probably going to be more next year if we get some good submissions uh, so uh, join us on the link here uh, on our shortened link mmgr.ph slash challenge uh, and uh, check it out check it out uh, a, a lot of different contributions uh, matter uh, towards the towards the cash prize it can be a demo with memgraph it can be some sort of a contribution into one of our open source repositories. Is that right, Ivan? Yeah, you can literally do anything as long as it's a code implementation and you can um, tell us why it mattered, what you did. It's okay. And if you're watching this after the 31st of December, uh, also visit Stay the tuned link. We might have the some next other iterate. edition editions of unlucky, the challenge. Un unlucky, oh. unlucky at, at that point. Uh, unlucky <laughs> right Maybe now. even more lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But you can get lucky multiple times. I think if you win one, uh, I don't think it disqualifies you from winning more. Uh, Absolutely. Food for thought. Let's go next. Um, and uh, coming to the end of the stream. So go and check us out on memgraph.com if you want to Give Memgraph a shot. Go and download it with uh, memgraph.com slash download. Uh, you can go to our docs. We have a very comprehensive docs. And uh, join our vibrant uh, community at discord.gg slash memgraph. 
Uh, and also check out our open source open source repositories, github.com slash memgraph. Um, there's a bunch of them, quite a bit. Uh, uh, and uh, we have our forum for the question, discourse.memgraph.com. So follow the Memgraph community, uh, get engaged, uh, win some cash, uh, start to learn code. Uh, Zriha is uh, learning to code just uh, to win the prize. Uh, that's uh, a really good effort and a <laughs> good reason to uh, learn coding uh, and immediately into graphs, into the holy grail of, of all infrastructure. Uh, some opinions here, uh, but uh, a lot of people will agree with me. Uh, and uh, with all of that, uh, memgraph, mem memgr.ph slash discord, that's my last slide. Uh, so come join the community. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you, Ivan, for all of the interesting and insightful demos. We'll see if Sorry we can get more boring. people next time. Uh, no, you were awesome. You were awesome. You're awesome. You just didn't uh, didn't like my uh, my sound effects uh, because they might still be a little don't. bit too loud. Uh, still don't. Uh, Marco, you were thank amazing. You, for... you, you were amazing. Uh, you have to join on Saturday and do stuff. <laughs> Saturday. It's much better. It's much better when two people are coding than one one, one people is coding. It's, it's called pair programming. <laughs> pair programming. That's awesome. <laughs> I will. I will definitely watch you if you decide to join Marco. Um, and uh, if okay. you can see our handles, uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, we also post some cool stuff there uh, on Twitter. And Marco, thank you for the insightful uh, comments, especially the theory ones. Uh, and thank you for bringing the CDUC uh, or MemDuck into the equation. Uh, yeah, CDUC, CDUC is always here. Uh, he's actually debugging stuff. Uh, I just, I just translate. <laughs> and if you want to see more of the CDUC, come to the live stream, the Saturday live stream with Code with Buddha. Uh, that's a good call to action, I think. Yeah, yeah, always. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week and the weekend uh, or any other day in the year if you're watching us later and uh, we'll see you guys next time yep stay tuned thank you bye stay tuned bye bye Woo. bye bye bye